السلام علیکم السلام <laughs> وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ بِئْسَ لِلظَّالِمِينَ بَدَلًا مَا شَهِدْتُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا in the name of allah the most merciful the compassionate we said to the angels bow down before adam and they all bowed down but not iblis he was one of the jinn and he disobeyed his lord's command are you people going to take him and his offspring as your masters indeed instead of me even though they are your enemies what a bad bargain for the evil doers i did not make them witnesses to the creation of the heavens and earth nor to their own creation i do not take as support those who lead astray so we mentioned that surah al-kaf has uh, four important stories and in between uh, so two stories have been mentioned one is the story of the people of kaf and the other is the story of the people of the garden and then we have two more stories one will be the story of musa alaihi salam with the uh, mysterious figure or angelic figure and uh, some lesson that he learned and the fourth one is the story of uh, zulqarnain the king the ruler so two stories and other two stories in between this is a special message allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding uh, the believers that they should pay attention to what happened at the beginning of the creation so at the beginning of the creation as you know the story is mentioned in surah al baqarah and other places in surah uh, surah al araf Uh, that is uh, that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam alayhi salam and his wife and uh, he mentioned that to the angels that i am going to put a khalifa on the earth a deputy of mine on earth and that deputy is going to take care of all the creation that is the purpose of the creation of the human being so allah said to the angels and the angels said we are here to serve you we are here to praise you what is the need of another creation and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i know what you do not know and then after that he created adam alayhi salam and then the story goes that uh, then he taught adam many names and then the angels were asked to give the names and the angels of course they did not know so in this sense allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them that there is this creation will have more knowledge i have bestowed upon him some more knowledge and then after that the story comes that allah said to the angels to the to bow down to adam so is qulna lil malaikati isjudu li adam so here we do not have the whole story but at least one ayah tells us about a very important episode a very important aspect of that story and that is that the angels were asked to bow down to give respect to adam and adam of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him 
great honor that is the, the honor of the human being that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave knowledge to the human being that that knowledge is not given even to the angels angels know some particular area so they may be expert in their own particular area but over all knowledge comprehensive knowledge that is what is given to the human being so that's why uh, adam had a superiority of this knowledge and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the, uh, the angels to bow down wa iz qulna lil malaikati sujudu li adam we said to the angels bow down to adam bow down before adam and uh, it is said they all did that except iblis so there may be a confusion in the mind of some people that iblis might have been an angel because allah said to the angel bow down and he did not do that to so was he an angel illa iblis he just said no i'm not going to do that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified that point here in this ayah I say, "Kana min al jinn fa fasaqa anam." He was a jinn. He was not an angel, because angels don't disobey Allah. In the Quran, it is mentioned very clearly, "La yasun Allah ma amarahum wa yafalun ma yumarun." The angels they do not disobey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but they do whatever they are told. So, if the angels do not disobey Allah, how could they they disobey here? But then the question comes. but allah said to the angels to bow down so he was was he included in that command or not so allah said to the angels bow down and he did not so if he was not included in the command why would he be consider that how come he did not bow down the the answer that is given by our uh, commentators of the quran is that when the angels who were the great creation at that time when the angels were asked to bow down that means the whole creation was asked to respect human being because the highest beings were called told told to respect and everybody else is included in that so the allah subhanahu wa taala created human being and asked other creation to respect this human being including angels so angels were told to do that just like you go to an office bring all the clerks and all the other staff and then uh, you have some supervisors and you tell the supervisor this is the chief supervisor and you all respect him and listen to him what about the clerks clerk will say no no you didn't tell us you told only the supervisor we are not going to listen to him <laughs> everybody is included in that he did not say he only said to the supervisor this is the person who is your boss listen to him pay respect to him that means the whole office is included in that the whole staff is included in that everybody is included in that everybody has to listen so in a similar way the angels were in charge and the angels are told to bow to adam that means everybody is also there the jinn are not at the same level as angels but jinn are like human beings they are uh, a makhluq they are a creation that have the free will that means they have freedom to obey or disobey they say among the jinn there are some who are the believers and among the jinn there are those who are non believers among the jinn who are some who are dis- or obedient and some who are disobedient and you have that in surah al jinn and in number of other places in the quran and uh, allah subhanahu wa taala speaks to both of them especially in surah al rahman فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الإنس والجن أو the group of jinn and the human beings إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان if you can escape uh, from the creation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى anywhere try to escape but you cannot escape you cannot go beyond the grip and beyond the the grasp of Allah سبحانه وتعالى So nobody can do that neither the jinn can do that nor the human being can do that that means jinn have the freedom just like human beings have the freedom and jinn can obey or disobey so some jinn are maradatul jinn 
some jinn are rebellious jinns and some of them are those who believe like inna sami'na qur'anan ajaba yahdi ila ar-rushd fa amanna bi it's mentioned that some of them they listen to the quran and they say we listen to a wonderful quran fa amanna bi so we believe in it so that means among the jinn there are some who believe but there are some, and there are some who do not believe but angels all of them are obedient to allah subhanahu they do not have freedom they are they are programmed in one way and they cannot go beyond that program so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has programmed them as his servant obedient servant and they just do whatever he tells them send them here send them there and they are the one who take care of all the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why they are sitting with every human being and taking the record and in this record they don't confuse things they don't add things they don't delete things they write whatever they are told to write because they are, they are they are they are the the respectable honest right kiraman katibin al katibin al kiram hmm? they are the writers who are very noble writers the writers that are very trustworthy writers so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not put somebody to take a record who is not honest and he say i'm going to add things and for because i don't like this brother and don't i i i like this one so i say something all all kind of things no they are kiram and katibi and they are honest people so angels are special for a special purpose that's why angels uh, one of the angel bring the quran jibril alayhi salam bring the quran to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he would not change anything just as he heard he gave, bring it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the message and he brings it to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so kana min al jinn fa fasaqa an amr rabbi fisq here is the word is fisq is used fisq means rebellion going beyond the rules so he was a jinn kana min al jinn iblis was a jinn so one should never say that that some people say that oh he was uh, a great angel and he was actually the teachers of angels none of these things have any place in the quran or in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was a very powerful angel and then he did that no he was a jinn kana min al jinn fa fasaqa an amr rabbi now the point in this so in this whole uh, this uh, referring to this story the point is afata takhizunahu wa zurriyatahu awliya min duni are you going to take j- iblis and iblis uh, progeny zurriya zurriyat iblis are those who are iblis also so that means there are many shayateen iblis is shaitan and shaitan has his all his breed huh? he brought has his own children his own family and the people of his type they are called zurriya so zurriya means those who are produced by shaitan do a shaitan like him and there are many kind of shayateen some of them are from among the jinn and some of them are from among the human being shayateen al jinn wal ins yuhi ba'dhum ila ba'd zukhruf al qawl ghurura so allah mentioned in the quran there are some human beings who are shayateen and some jinn who are shaitan and they both mislead try, try to mislead people so anyone who follows the shaitan is his his child he was he is a, he as if he 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 was he get was shaitan has given birth to him so allah said aba tattakhizuna huwa zurriyatahu awliya are you going are you in that are you people the you is here the plural is you are you people going to take him and his offspring as your masters instead of me min duni instead of taking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the master you take shaitan as the master or take his any of his followers as a master what does it mean master that means obey them listen to their command whatever they say do uh, trust them Allah says uh, in uh, in the shaitan alakum aduun fala fattakhizuhu aduwa shaitan is your enemy so consider him as your enemy don't consider him as your friend 
So awliya both means friend as well as supporters and masters. The word wali is uh, a very interesting word that is used in the Quran for several, uh, several meanings. Wali means friend. Wali means somebody who is very close. A wali is a, 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 somebody who is a guardian, an authority, a master, a supporter. All of these are the meanings of the word wali and used in the Quran in different ways. So here is used that way as, a master, as masters or as supporters. Minduni, other than me. Uh, believers are supposed to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their support. Believers are, are those who take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their master, as their guide. Bahum lakum adu. Bahum lakum adu. This is the hal. This is the condition while they are your enemy. So shaitan and his uh, family, they are all your enemies. And they say, Bi'sa lil zalimin abadala. What an evil substitute for the wrongdoers. And instead of taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking Allah's uh, righteous people, the prophets of Allah as your support, as your teachers, as your guide, people are going to shaitan. Although it is known that shaitan is an enemy, the Holy story tells us that from the very beginning he was an enemy. He, he refused to bow down to Adam and he wanted to take the Adam out from Jannah. So what he did? After that, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them, Adam alayhi salam and his wife, Hawa alayhi salam, put them in Jannah, he came and misled them and got them out of that place. So Allah said, Are you going to make him and his family as your supporters? Other than me, even though they are your enemies, what a bad bargain for the evil doers. What a bad substitute for the wrongdoers. It's a basic result. How evil it is, how wrong it is that uh, you know who the, who the shaitan is and what the shaitan does, but still many people go into his uh, traps. Hmm? He entraps them. And they, they get into, involved into all kind of evils and wrongs. I did not make them witnesses to the creation of the heavens and earth, nor to their own creation. I do not take as support those who lead astray. Here is uh, probably meant by uh, the, this uh, Iblis and his Zurriya, some who claim as if they were there at the time of creation with Allah. And as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, does not do anything without their support, without their um, presence. So they are the ones who are, who, uh, who are there as supporters of Allah. This is the way how some of the shayateen, they misled people, telling them that we are in the high place. We have, we have, we have high position. Allah said, that, no, I did not. I have nobody whom I invited to witness the creation of the heaven and the earth. Ma'ashatum. Such people I will not. How would I, why, why would I invite those people to become my, my witnesses or my supporters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take the support of any of these people. And I'm not to take the wrongdoers, the evil ones, as my support. So this is an important point that one should keep in mind. Uh, that is the, how the trials come and in, in the trials what kind of uh, effects make the, by the evil powers and uh, the evil authorities. That is, uh, remember that the story of uh, Ashab al-Kahf and then after that the, the people of the two gardens. Ashab al-Kahf are the people who were, uh, who were had a great difficulty because of their Iman, because of their faith. And the authorities uh, try to mislead them and take them away. 
and because of that they had to go and hide themselves in a cave on the other hand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of a person who had two gardens and instead of being thankful to allah he became arrogant he thought that this is his own by his own effort that he got that and this is a permanent thing that is going to stay with him and he did not he lost it so all of these things come from shaitan ma shattum khalq as-samawati wal ard wa la khalq anfusihim wa ma kuntum muttakhadhal mudhillin adza and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say what is going to happen on the day of judgment so mention that in the creation they were not there and then at the end they will not be there also to help wa yawma yaqulu nadu shurakai alladhina zaamtum fad'awhum falam yastajibu lahum wa ja'alna bainahum mawbiqa wa ra'a almujrimun an-nar fa dhannu annahum muwaqi'uha wa lam yajidu 'anha masrifa on the day he will say call on those you claim were my partners they will call them but they will not answer them we shall set a deadly gulf between them the evil doers will see the fire and they will realize that they are about to fall into it they they will find no escape from it so on the day of judgment allah will say where are you where are the people you call that they are guards beside allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where are they when any uh, whether any prophets or any saints or anyone else that you consider they are going to come to your support because they are have the authority with allah aina shurakaukum wa yaqulu nadu shurakai ha la sa nadu shurakai alladhina zaamtum and if you said that you claim that i have some partners in the kingdom you call them if there is anyone else beside me as an authority in the kingdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there anyone who is god beside allah call upon that god let me see so nadu shuraka ay alladhina zaamtum zaam means a claim an assertion so this was a false claim so you made a claim this means the the mushrikeen they were making a claim you made a claim and you were saying that god has a partner so where is where are those partners nadu shurakai alladhina zaamtum fad'awhum so they will call them they will try to seek some help falam yastajibu lahum and they will not get any answer falam yastajibu lahum they will not give them any answer وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَوْبِقًا and we will make a gulf between them that means they will be far away from each other they will not be able to hear them so مَوْبِق is a gulf and some of the commentators have explained that they said this is the actually the animosity that will come they will hurt them so the people whom they call beside Allah as God they will disown them they say no 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 we have nothing to do with that even shaitan iblis at that time he will leave his followers he said i fear allah i did not tell you to follow me you followed me by your own will you had your own freedom so you abuse your freedom so i only showed you the wrong way but you followed it yourself So I'm not responsible for you. Ma ana be musrikh kum wala anto be musrikhi. You cannot help me, and I'm not going to help you. Inni akhafu Allah. I fear Allah. <laughs> so Shaitan will leave them in the lurch, as the Quran says. Leave them at the most difficult time, at the most critical time. He will leave them alone, run away, and that is the betrayal. So he is the greatest betrayal. He is the greatest. Uh, person who is a disloyal person he will have no loyalty with his friends with his uh, followers so wara al mujrimun an nar and the evil doers they will see the hell wa dhannu annahum muwaqi'uha and they will realize that they are going to fall into it 
help will be there. Walam yajidu anha masrifan. There is no one, no place where one can escape. Where one is going to run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people uh, cannot run away, especially on that day. So it is, uh, the reminder is here that you have time here. This is the opportunity that here prepare yourself and follow the right path. That will be the masrif. That will be the escape. That is the way to protect oneself from hell. Qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourself and protect your families from hell. But then when it comes there, the last day comes when the when the judgment is already taken place. On that day, who can run away? So this is uh, the section that comes in between. After this, we have uh, yes, we have some ayat emphasizing the same point, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ فَكَانَ الْإِنْسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلَ." وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليضحدوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا in this Quran, we have presented every kind of description for people, but man is more contentious than any other creature. Now that guidance has come to them, what stops the people from believing and asking forgiveness from their Lord? Except that the way of earlier people happens to them or their torment confronts them. We only send messengers to bring good news and to deliver warning. Yet the disbelievers seek to refute the truth with false arguments and make fun of my messengers and warning. So in this Quran, we have presented every kind of description. Allah SWT has mentioned all kind of things that will bring people to the right path. So examples are given, uh, stories are told, uh, you know, description of Jannah is there, description of hell is there. So we gave everything that is sufficient for the humankind. And I mean, ekulli masalin yakfi, ilil hidayah. We have given every kind of description, every kind of example that is enough for guidance. But the man, wakana linsan waksrasha in jadala. But man is very contentious. Man is very argumentative. Hmm? That is, uh, whatever you tell them, whatever you see, you show them miracles, they disagree. They see by their own eyes the truth, they don't want to believe it. Quran, wasn't he? Musa alayhi salam came and showed him, you know, took his hand from his palm, from his armpit and showed it shining like a glittering star. He had a stick, put it down, became a serpent. He saw that. He said, oh, you are a magician. Anta sahib. I have also magicians, all right? So bring your magicians. So he brought gather all the magicians, expert magicians. Okay, come, let's have a contest. They brought their ropes and sticks and everything. And people thought that those are sticks and those ropes are there. And Allah said to Musa, put al-qiasak. Put your stick. فَإِذَا هِيَ تَلْقَفُ مَا And suddenly they saw that all their ropes and sticks gone. And the stick was there. Musa salam and Fir'aun and the whole audience saw that. Everybody saw that by their own eyes what happened. What did they say? Man is very contentious. He saw the truth by his own eyes. 
and he said oh so you moses and aaron you want to be uh, leaders of this clan and you have come to take over my my power my authority i uh, and the magicians came and they believed all the magicians they put made sajda they said we saw the truth amanna bi rabbi musa we believe in musa the lord he said oh this is all conspiracy you all made a conspiracy together so you all belong to the same group and i'm going to cut your hands i'm going to cut your legs i'm going to hang you up la qutta anna adiyakum wa arjulakum min khilaf la usallibannakum ala juzwa nakhl each one will be hanging on the tree i'll do that you see that kanal insan waksal shayin jadal this is the jadal this is the contentiousness this is the evil of the human being so they see the truth but they don't want to follow that musa uh, isa alayhi salam jesus peace be upon him allah peace and mercy be upon him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a great power he would heal the person touch his hand by the person who was a leper become healthy a person was blind he started seeing somebody dead he raised him up allah gave him by his to do that so by his power he did that and the bani israel they saw that by their own eyes of that time what did they say oh it's some kind of shaitan he has in his power who is doing that he is not a prophet of god he is not a messenger of god they didn't believe him so this is the man's problem if people don't want to believe they don't want to believe you can tell them anything they don't want to believe so kind of insan aksara shayin jadala man is very very contentious man is uh, this is the insan the insan is the word is used in the quran very often the word insan is used to show the evil side of insan inna al insana uh, خلق هلوع إذا مسه الشر جزوع إن الإنسان لا في خسر. You have that sword. So that is insan's problem. Even though he is one of the best creation of Allah, but he can become the lowest of the low. أسفل السافلين. He can go become the lowest of the low. So. And why people don't believe? The Quran says وما منع الناس يؤمنون إذ جاءهم الهدى. What stops the people from believing? after the guidance has come to them and seeking forgiveness from their lord why why they don't believe why they don't seek allah's guidance he said because people follow the same way as some other people did that before and they were punished illa an ta'tiyahum sunnatul awwalin aw ya'tiyahum al adhab qubla this is the this is the story of the man from time to time from time to time they rebel they disobey and they become all kind of evil they do but allah has been sending his prophets throughout history many prophets came and they are giving good news as well as warning so ma nursal mursalin illa mubashshirin wa munzirin we send the prophets mursal is and rasul is the same thing mursal means the one who is sent rasul is the one who is being sent so we so we send the messengers uh, to give the good news and to warn but the disbelievers they argue with them mm, they argue with falsehood they say yet the disbelievers seek to refute the truth with false argument جاءت الذين كفروا بالباطل ليذهدوا به الحق to refute the haq by false arguments and they make fun of Allah's ayat and they make fun of Allah's messengers you see that all the time is happening that people make fun of Rasulullah people make fun of other prophets of Allah Musa alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi salam they make fun and they make fun of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they think that they are going to escape the punishment but Allah says this happened to before 
the people of Samud did that, the people of Ad did that, uh, the people of um, you know, Firaun did that, and many other groups like that. So this is the Sunnah to Awwaleen. Sunnah, you know, the word Sunnah is used in both meanings. Sunnah is the Sunnah of Rasulullah of course, Sunnah is the following the way of Rasulullah but Sunnah could be the bad Sunnah. <laughs> so it is used in the literal sense. Uh, that is Sunnah, good Sunnah. The Rasulullah said in one of the hadith, Man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha. If you make a good example, you will have the reward. Woman sanna sunnatan sayya. And if somebody has a bad example, then he will have the punishment and then all the punishment of those who will follow that. So sunnah means literally, literally means a way. Good way or bad way, both possible. But as a term, as a istilah, when we say sunnah, we mean sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu That means, of course, good sunnah. So there's, uh, one has to understand that, that sometimes the word is used in its linguistic meaning, literal meaning, and sometimes it is used as, as a term. Hmm? Like uh, uh, kufr means disbelief. Huh? So disbelief. Now disbelief, sometimes it is good. Not all disbelief is bad. I mean, disbelieving in shaitan is good. <laughs> Allah SWT says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَيَكْفُرْ بِالتَّاغُوتِ The one who believe in Allah and make kufr of ta'ut. <laughs> so we, we also have to do some kufr. But kufr of what? Kufr of shaitan. <laughs> kufr of ta'ut. <laughs> that means we deny ta'ut. We reject Tawud. So the word Kufr is used here in the meaning of disbelief. So disbelief, yes, every believer is supposed to disbelieve in something. We believe in Allah and do not believe in Shaitan. That's what the Quran says in Surah uh, after Ayatul Kursi, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَيَكْفُرْ بِالتَّاوُدِ فَقَدْ اِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُسْقَى لَنْفِصَامَ لَهَا then he is holding a mighty bond that is not going to break. So the words have to be understood in this proper context and in the proper meaning. So I can take some questions, inshallah. Purgatory idea is only among the Catholics. Yeah, they have a concept of purgatory. Purgatory means the where the cleansing takes place. So, but we don't have that. Uh, that there is a special place where people go. Uh, but uh, yes, it is uh, those who commit sin, they may go to hell, and then after that, if they had iman, they will be taken out from that. That's why the, some of the ahadis say that those uh, who will go or uh, do this and who will do this, they will not go to Jannah. The ulama say they will not go to Jannah immediately. They may go later to <laughs> Jannah because of their Iman. So they will not go to Jannah now immediately. That means they, they had to go through some punishment some, uh, because of some wrong. Because evil is evil unless somebody has repented and asked Allah's forgiveness. So ask Allah's forgiveness. But one should not take a chance or say, okay, like uh, some of them said, that is the. Then tamasan al nar will la yam al maadudat. Allah says in the Quran, some of them say, yeah, we are going to be punished for some few days. After that, we will be saved. So that means okay to do that. I can take it for few days. But even few days are terrible. 
uh, those children, so one should try to see that one should not even come near it. One should not even have a smoke of hellfire. Even the smoke will be terrible. So be away completely from its heat and from its smoke and from its, uh, you know, its uh, all this pollution that <laughs> that should come from there. Be away from it completely. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keep us away from that. So uh, yeah, some people they had that belief and that also uh, some Muslims started saying the same thing. That is, uh, we can take it for a few days. Ask them, so can you take some some burning coal in your hand for a few days? Can you do that for some time? <laughs> or even for a few minutes, for a few seconds, we can do that. I say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. So how can you take that burning fire for God? Cult. Cult is the, that is the, a kind of a group that uh, behind one person and they, they make that person as uh, their uh, God, as their, uh, and uh, they worship almost a human being, a person. And uh, so that's what is cult. Cult means, literally means worship, uh, but uh, cult as a term is used for smaller groups where people uh, take their leader as like a um, almost like a divine figure godly figure and they, uh, the whole emphasis is on that person whatever the person says what the person does they take it that way and they they make him almost like god that is the cultist Yeah, the, the sister is asking what is the difference between magic and miracle. Uh, magic, of course, is something that is totally a, 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 a illusion that is given on the eyes so that you don't, there is no reality behind it. There is no reality behind it. Somebody has just played some tricks uh, and some of them is sorcery. Sometimes people do this kind of things in order to control people from through the jinn and all those things. Uh, but m miracle is, uh, has no evil in it. The miracle is something that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, when people uh, refuse, then something is come to shown so that they will see that, the truth. So its purpose is uh, to, to prove the truth. Nothing more than that. Its purpose is not to do anything other than that. So, mu'ajiza, miracle, is totally positive, totally good. Well, on the other hand, the, the, this uh, sorcery or, or, or tricks, sometimes they are trying to collect money from the people, sometimes to mislead people, sometimes to deceive them, sometimes to separate between man and wife, and the family separation, and all this kind of evil that will come. يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِي as the Quran says by this they used to destroy the family relations by doing this kind of magical thing that they will do that yeah it's, a sh it's haram it's haram to do that to, to, commit, to do any act of, sh of uh, magic سحر سحر and it's putting a spell upon people and uh, doing this type kind of thing Jadu uh, Karna, because it, this is abso absolutely forbidden. The Prophet did not allow, the, uh, I spoke about that. This is. Uh, inshallah, inshallah. That's the best thing. That is to ask Allah SWT to protect from every kind of uh, spells and uh, ideas and suggestions from shayateen that will come.
did where did you read this? In a khutbah? Yeah. I am not aware of that. I have to check it. What is the what is the exact sometimes people um, may take a story but they may misinterpret it, so I'll have to really look at that. I don't know. I don't I don't recall anything. Yeah. Allah. So this is uh, so today's lesson. Um, do not take evil doers as your support. Shaitan and his zurriya, uh, his uh, progeny, do not take them as your support, but try to be aware and be cautious of that. And then the evil doers find no help. On the day of judgment, there will be no help for them. And then finally, Allah reminds about man's contentiousness. Uh, that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his reminders for his prophets, but human beings, uh, they do not act uh, with uh, care and concern that they should do that. So that's uh, the, the point is that one should uh, pay rather attention to Allah's words very carefully and listen to them. And this is the attitude of the believer. The word sajda also, I mean sajda ibada, that is sajda ibada, that is you make prostration, put your head on the ground, that's the sajda of ibada, that's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, if somebody, sajda also means respect and bobbing, so a, a little bobbing and all this also could be considered respect. That's not ibadah, that you do it tazim, and for tazim to do that. Quran mentioned that, here you have Adam and uh, angels, angels were art to make sajda, and then you have Yusuf alayhi brothers made sajda. Kharru lahu sajjada, sujjada. And they bowed, they, they made they bowed to him. So you had that. Some of the ulama say it was something allowed before, but then the Prophet ﷺ absolutely forbade that, so so that there should not be any shirk, any association with shirk. But in the beginning, it was allowed for the people. But some others say that no, it was not of uh, ibadah at all. It was only for uh, ta'zim. And uh, in different cultures, people do that. Sometimes people, you know, they, for their elders, they do that. So they do that. As long as it's not the intention of ibadah. And everything. But one should not make the same sajda as we do in our salat, in front of any grave, in front of any person. You know, that's, that's very wrong. Somebody asked me to look at the, at the YouTube, a very, very f uh, I mean, strange kind of scene that I saw. They mentioned there was some uh, Pirsa, hmm? so-called Pirsa. He was sitting on the chair, and people were in the line coming, and everybody is making sight there in front of him, Go all the way on his, uh, kissing his, his feet, making sight there, and then standing up and going, standing up and going. That was happening in a Muslim country. I don't want to mention the name. <laughs> very, very strange. Terrible thing. This is not Islam. This is all shirk. Yes. Yeah, that, that's not right. That's the Islam. I mean, uh, Islam. I mean, Sufis have done great job. May Allah bless them. Some of them are great teachers of Tawheed and righteousness. But some of the fake ones, they took people away from the right path. And uh, they became like what you were mentioning, cult. <laughs> Around one person, and the person will say, you have to listen to me, and you have to bow before me, and you have to do this for me. All of this thing. Eh? So they will say, whatever 
your peer say do it i say if he says bo main sajjada rangi kon garat peer muga go yaad hai you know that bo main sajjada rangi kon garat peer muga go yaad ke salik be khabar na buad zara ho rasm manzil ha hafiz shirazi said that then he said that if your uh, peer says that pour some wine on your musalla on your sajada huh? the place the place of salat do that because he knows what is uh, what is the right way of doing things so whatever he says do it <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> اللهم صل على قائد حسن كيف تظن رايت فات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار رب اغفر وارحم وانت خير الراحمين وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وصحبه برحمتك يا أرحم Thank you.